Scott Brown here. In this exciting episode, we discuss vacuum cleaners and how a vacuum cleaner almost got me fired. It is a bit ridiculous. But the bonus of having this bench is that it's super useful. We've uh, cut all these plywood panels here and made them to match this wall. So this morning I need to cut rebates on them to create a negative detail. And I've got that beautiful bench there to do it on. This vacuum was one of the first things I bought when I came back to New Zealand after working in Edinburgh. I did that for a reason. And the main reason is I got used to using it for every tool pretty much. And uh, I nearly got fired when I didn't use it on one particular tool. This is a, uh, another vacuum we've been using lately. Flex vault. Yeah, it's working. Battery powered vacuum. <laughs> Seems to be working now that the battery's full. That's all it was, eh? That's all it was, eh? How's the sound insulation going? Can't hear you, bro. <laughs> Can't hear a thing, eh? Perfect, man. Basically, what happened was we were working in Edinburgh on apartments, renovating them, and um, you know, you're working inside the whole time, so you have to have a vacuum attached to your tools. I never really did this here in New Zealand. So I wasn't really used to it. I think we were cutting in one bedroom for maybe two hours. We had to do a few nogs and then we had to move on. And we didn't have a vacuum attached to our miter saw, drop saw. That just happened to be the moment that a safety guy came to do an inspection. And I got a letter the following day saying, you know, you've been caught using this drop saw without a, a dust extraction attached. If this happens again, you will be dismissed from site immediately. So I wish I could find the letter. I've got it in my apartment somewhere. I couldn't find it. It was basically that experience, you know, working with dust extraction all the time, which made me realize that having it is better than not having it. So I think I've got a bit of a system here for making this rebate. Came out pretty good. Yeah. So when that sheet is on the wall, it'll look like a shadow gap when the other sheet is joined to it. Yeah, well that's the plan anyway. How's it going? <laughs> Sniper. Show some morning tea? Yes sir. There really is a lot of power in there. So another reason I try to use the vacuum as much as possible now is I sort of learnt how harmful some of the stuff we cut is, especially the treated timber. And if you've watched the videos, you'll see all our timbers either pink or green. So it's always got some treatment in it. If you don't have dust extraction set up, you're pretty much surrounded by that stuff. And we're not perfect, you know, we, we don't always have it hooked up because we've only got one vacuum and we've got a table saw or a drop saw, but I, I always try to because that pink timber's got boron in it, which is definitely not good for you. And the green stuff is CCA treated, I think. Um, it's basically got arsenic in it, pretty much. And these things can cause cancer, so. I try to use dust extraction for safety as well as general tidiness. So Pato, do you remember the days of working without a vacuum cleaner? Um, I don't remember yesterday, bro, so no. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. So you probably noticed when I used that router that the dust was going everywhere, and that usually means that it is full. Full. So let's go empty it, shall we? So this is the vacuum that I bought when I got back from Edinburgh, and it's a Festool MIDI, in case you want to look it up, and it's great. It's fantastic. The hose rolls inside this area at the top here, and the lead kind of rolls on top of that as well. And then it's got the manual function and the auto function. It's also got speed, but I just keep it on, keep it on the, the fast one. And then when it's on auto, this is the, the cool thing. You plug your drop saw or table saw or whatever tool you're using into here, and as soon as you turn your drop saw on, the vacuum turns on. That's crucial. And to empty it, which is what we need to do right now, you go like this. Yeah, that's pretty full away. And this is a this is a throwaway bag, to be honest. And you can get long life bags, and they kind of zip up. But uh, the reason I didn't get that is because apparently they're not very good with jib dust, and that's something we use this vacuum for a lot. So yeah, the Festool MIDI, I highly recommend. If I buy more vacuum cleaners, there'll just be more of these, probably. So there's so many of these rebates to do, and uh, seemingly no quick way to do it. So we just have to crack on with it. start to see it take shape now. Might have to get another sheet. We're a sheet short because our original plan was just to end at this corner, but then we realized that there will be no real way to finish it there. And the ply is going So we might as well go down there as well. Yeah, lunchtime. Bobby hit, Dumboot hit. Dumboot cut, there you go. Thanks, buddy. Everything about New Zealand. Wow, what a treat. So all these sheets are numbered. I've got numbers on the back of them. And uh, they all connect to one another. And the rebates go in particular places. So as we put it on the wall, probably in the next episode as we put it on the wall we'll start to see how it goes together i was actually thinking for the next episode as well i mean you can tell me if this is a bad or a good idea but i was thinking we could do a q and a i get questions every single day uh, via instagram and on emails and often it's the same questions so rather than answering everybody individually um, it might be good to have like a regular q and a maybe once a month and, you know, nothing too formal, just do it inside one of the episodes. So if you've got a question, comment below. I might do an Instagram story about it as well, uh, when I film it. And that way I can get questions through there as well. So if you've got a question for Scott Brown Carpentry, Pido, Cameron, ask below. So let me know your questions below, guys. Do you want to help answer questions as well, Paddle? Still want a stupid answer, sure. <laughs> there you go. Give you a visual representation of what's going to look like. Okay, looks alright, eh? I think it's going to look cool. What do you reckon? Boom, boom, boom. And that'll go around here as well. So cool. How does it make you feel? Makes me feel positive. Yeah.
but as you can tell, it's gonna take a bit of delicate maneuvering. Handcrafted by Frank, AKA Carpenter One Three. He made this router plate, and that's what I've been using in this video and I've used in previous videos. Anyway, he's got a cool Instagram channel. I've linked that previously in my videos. Um, and he made this plate for me and called it the Scott Brown Elite Plate. So, can't be that, can you? Um, he just started a YouTube channel. That's what I'm mentioning this for. So I'll put a link to that down below. Um, I don't think he's got any videos up yet, but uh, I've seen him on Instagram. He does amazing stories and posts, so I'm sure his channel is going to be well worth a visit. So I'll put the link below. One of the uh, best things about working at this job is that the owner lets me use his drone. So should we uh, end this by flying on out of here, shall we? Let's do it. Ah. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this exciting episode. If you've got any questions, please comment below. The uh, Tripod is sliding down uh, before it completely falls over. Thanks for watching this exciting episode and uh, see you in the next one. Alright, bye.